A new U.S. study has revealed that electric vehicles are now more expensive than those powered on petrol, and they're more expensive to run. Shock horror, a rise in electricity prices in the U.S. and a drop <laughs> in petrol price there is the reason for the shift. But, Caleb, are you surprised about this? And what do you reckon is going to happen when everybody wakes up one day and, you know, thinks, hey, gosh, I bought this EV, I can't drive to Canberra on one charge, and, by the way, it's cost me a fortune to run? Well, I know. I mean, I've recently moved from Melbourne to Sydney. Now, that was took me roughly nine hours, that drive. I did it on one and a half tanks in the Audi A5. Can you imagine if I had to do that trip in an EV, I would have had to have stopped halfway, probably, you know, Albury, Wodonga, somewhere, stopped for an hour to recharge the car. And, of course, we saw over the summer holidays, lineups of people who are going on road trips, because that's the thing to do now, wanting to charge up their EVs, there's not enough charges to do it. So not only are you paying more than if you're driving a petrol car, not only are you waiting around for hours in order to charge your car, we've now got people who are so upset that they're driving around in Teslas because of the, uh, the advent of Elon Musk owning Twitter that they're complaining online that they're being judged for driving around in electric vehicles. Of course, they didn't worry about that. Are they that. tweeting about it? They are tweeting oh. about it, of course. Of course they are, James. <laughs> they weren't worrying about that when they bought the EV so they could be judged kindly for driving an EV, but now that it's attached to Elon Musk, we don't like it. It's just so delicious to know all these people who thought they were doing the most virtuous thing <laughs> are getting rooted at every turn. And, Pardell, I mean, how is Chris Bowen going to cope if this happens here? Because we know that all of these trends, energy and everything else, they make their way across Pacific eventually. Of course, of course, and it will happen here as well, and we've got much longer distances between many of our cities as well, which means that we'll have big problems, you know, much more than Europe will or even some places in the States will. Um, so, you know, it's it's going to happen. How, how the government will react? Well, I guess they're going to have to explain it along with the transition costs of every other part of the energy sector, which is that if that's where we want to go and that is where we've told you we want to go, there are going to be additional costs. You know, at some point, we're going to have to face up to the fact that renewable energy is actually not cheaper despite what? coming from the sun. <laughs> Parnell, <laughs> Parnell, we're going to have to end this panel right now on that note of blasphemy from Parnell because we all know that renewables are, as they keep telling us, the cheapest form of energy going. So, you know, I'm sorry. That's, that's what Chris Bowen says, so I think we're all cancelled. Anyway, Caleb Bond, Parnell, thank you so much for joining me here on the panel.